Can you take images of galaxies from the city? I'm Quave the Lazy Geek and I am here in Tokyo, Japan, one of the most light polluted cities on Earth. I am in what we call a white zone, meaning that you can barely see the, sky, the stars at night. You can somewhat see Orion's Nebula, you can see the North Star if you squint, but not a lot more. And yet, from this balcony in Tokyo, I do astrophotography regularly and one of the most difficult targets to, um, to really image are galaxies like the Andromeda Galaxy M31, our nearest uh, galaxy neighbor and uh, the Triangulum Galaxy M33 or what I've attempted to capture in recent nights, uh, M81, the Bode Nebula or Bode Galaxy which is close to Polaris, the North Star. And why are things so difficult to capture from the city? Well, it's the light pollution. It's all of those lights from houses, from street lamps, from cars, from banners, advertising, all of this kind of stuff that will basically propagate in the sky using effectively the same mechanism as sunlight making the sky blue all around and not just like having a, the sun there and then the, whole, the rest of the sky is dark. And that light pollution, it introduces a lot of noise in images that we want to take. And that's why most professionally obser uh, professional observatories are in very remote areas. So here in Tokyo, what can we do to fight light pollution? There's no real ideal solution. Like the, the most important solution is to basically take very long amounts of exposure times to spend a lot of time in imaging the target. So like taking 30 second, one minute exposures and we take many of them and then we average them out. And then we have processes to remove the light pollution gradients and to try to find the object behind the light pollution. But all of the noise, all of the uncertainty that the light pollution has introduced is still there. It is more limited, but it is still there and it deteriorates the image. So another solution that we have is filters. And by filters we can use for things like nebulae, like the Great Orient Nebula, narrowband filters, where we let only a tiny sliver of color through our uh, lens and to the camera sensor. And because we let only a, a tiny sliver of color, there's not a lot, of, a lot of light pollution in there. But it so happens that the signal we want to capture is contained mostly within that single color. So that's great for nebula, but we don't really have that for galaxies. For galaxies, we need to capture a, across a broad spectrum of color, effectively across the whole visible range to get good results. And that means we get the full impact of light pollution. So we do get light pollution filters. And one of the light pollution filters that I've used uh, recently is called the IDAS GNB, the Galaxy and Nebula Booster. And it's very interesting because it does exactly what I mentioned earlier. It will let in two slivers of color, which are useful to some extent for galaxies, for the nebulae that are situated within those distant galaxies, uh, but it also adds near infrared, so not part of the visible spectrum. With our naked eye, we wouldn't be able to see that, but the camera here is actually sensitive to that. So with the right equipment and the right filter, we're able to get more information that is less polluted by the Tokyo light pollution than otherwise. Is it perfect? No, but it is much better. And so I'm using this setup here to, uh, to work around my light pollution as much as possible. This setup is what we call a very fast setup with a focal ratio of f2 and it means that per pixel it gathers a lot of photons per unit of time effectively. So every second I get a lot of photons on each of my pixels because of this f2 uh, focal ratio. And it really is extremely helpful for uh, galaxy imaging in order to gather as much data, as much signal from my target as I can along, unfortunately, with the uh, light pollution. So anyway, with this setup, I've recently taken uh, around 13 hours of data across three different nights using my IDAS uh, GNB filter in here, along with this camera that is very sensitive to the near infrared in addition to visible spectrum. 
and I want to try and process that image that I took and maybe combine it with color data, with like broadband data across the visible spectrum that I took of the same object of the same galaxy last year and see whether we can get the best of both worlds in terms of near infrared and color slivers in our band that are uh, less affected by light pollution in addition with the colored data that I took that is very affected by light pollution. For that, we're gonna have to do some processing on my computer. Okay, and we are now in PixInsight, my uh, processing software of choice. And what I've done is I had something like 1,530 second exposures of that uh, galaxy and I averaged them, stacked them all together using PixInsight to basically increase our signal to noise ratio as much, much as possible. And this is the initial result. Actually, uh, if you look at it, it's only something like this uh, with everything dark, but you can basically stretch it, increase the luminosity uh, levels judiciously to see something like this, which doesn't look too bad, but it does look like it doesn't have a lot of color. And uh, I already did what we call background extraction, which is effectively removing the light pollution gradient from the image since I'm imaging from Tokyo. By doing so, we're removing the gradient of light pollution. So we're removing like the average of the light pollution, but the noise introduced by the light pollution stays in the image, unfortunately. Because the noise is random, uh, it, it cannot be removed. And, and so we just have to deal with the additional noise that has been added by light pollution. And this here is the result. And so I did several processes. Um, the first one was like ex extracting the background, so basically effectively removing the average of the light pollution signal. And then I did what we call a photometric color calibration, which is basically looking at the stars where, uh, where we are and saying like, okay, this star should be white because it's like a similar star to our sun. And therefore the colors of the galaxies should be something like this. So that's what this operation does. It does it automatically based on the detected stars. And while the image still appears very black and white and very monochrome there, we can see that there are traces of red within the galaxy. Those traces of red, they're nebulae within the distant galaxy, which I find incredibly cool. Then I used a tool called a Blur Exterminator to increase the details within the uh, galaxies and also decrease the size of the stars. You can see the before and after with a Blur Exterminator. Uh, then I used some pixel mass to do some what we call stretching of the image to increase effectively the brightness of the, uh, of the image and increasing the brightness of the galaxies more than the brightness of the background. And I used uh, what we call a pixel mass uh, script, basically mathematical formulas that have been created by someone else and I'm just using someone else's work. And um, this is the result that I'm getting after that uh, initial st stretch. Now we can see that the details within the core of the galaxy here are the detail within the core of the galaxy. We can see some kind of pattern, but it seems to be more or less like it's difficult to see. It's like uh, kind of uh, lost in the overall brightness of the core of the galaxy. And so I ran um, HDR multi-scale transform separately on each galaxy with uh, different parameters. And HDR multi-scale multi transform, it will play with the luminosities that are available in the signal to make like those darker luminosities more obvious to our eyes. It doesn't invent data, it just uh, uh, reveals the data that's already there. So this is on this galaxy before and after. I used uh, a mask just on this galaxy. And then we have the after on this galaxy. So you can see the, the brightness of the core has been tamed to really uh, see all of the details in here. And our, my next step was to effectively remove the stars. And you remove the stars to be able to process the nebulosity of the galaxies, like increase their brightness, that kind of stuff, or increase their saturation without affecting the stars around the, uh, the galaxies, which if you increase the brightness, they can just become complete white dots that are less pleasing to the eye. And so that was the next step before I did uh, some changes in terms of curves, you can see like I get uh, more um, saturation, some color is starting to come out, even more color, more color, 
like I'm playing basically and you can see like red jets of gas out going outside of the of the core of this cigar galaxy at the bottom right and keep keep doing en enhancements like that with just curves and this is as an additional step, I did um, a process called noise exterminator that basically tries to take all of these little, little points of uh, grain of digital noise in the image and smooth them out like we see here without like losing too much of the actual details within the image. So before and after. And adding some more saturation in the red, which is very visible for that filter. So now we're, we're definitely noticing colors in the image, especially those like jets of, um, of red from the core of the other galaxy, although we also see like there's a considerable amount of noise um, even then because yeah, there's no miracles from Tokyo and, uh, and then further uh, processes. Um, the next one was to remove some green tinges and some more curves, curves, curves. And this is kind of like to try to isolate the galaxies. Um, it's always difficult to find when is the right time to stop isolating the, the galaxies from the background. Uh, but this is what I end up with after I add the stars back after all of those uh, processes. And um, then a quick flip of the image because my, uh, my um, imaging tool is mirror based. And um, yeah, that's pretty much like the extent of the image. Now there are other modifications that could be done and there's always, which is very interesting with processing of astrophotography pictures, different ways of processing. Like some people might think I've gone too much deep into removing, like into darkening the background and this is going too far. That's a per perfectly valid opinion. And I'm personally, personally never satisfied with the images that I'm getting. So this is kind of like the final image with just uh, my data from, uh, here it is, from the, uh, the single filter that is effectively a light pollution filter with near infrared signal in there. It's the noise in there and the details are very controlled, but I'm not satisfied about the colors. Typically this galaxy would see bluish arms of color in there, which are not visible there. And so what I did is I merged it with an image that I had taken previously, the year before actually, that was full color, full broadband on the visible uh, spectrum. And this is what the uh, full color image looked like. And you can see that uh, the, the color in the core, the color in the arms, it's the much more natural color. It's a bluish color that we expect from galaxies. And then the cigar galaxy there while it has it's so much noisier and uh, and it doesn't have as much as the red of the red streams of, of light coming out of it um, the colors are much more satisfying than this kind of like blackish kind of color that I get there so then we can merge those images the easiest way to merge is to simply take the average of uh, of both so basically add them together and take the average and this is my result of the average and so we do get like the nice colors of the, of the galaxy. We get much less noise from my uh, light pollution filter. And I, I, I kind of like this one. And we have another choice, which is using our light pollution filter there as a luminance layer. Basically we say like this image here will be the source of details, whereas this image there will be the source of um, color. And I ended up with this image there, which I really think is uh, nice looking. It removes a lot of the noise from uh, this image here. It and extends the visible nebulosity and it smooths things out very well. I really like this uh, final image here that I am getting, but it is very difficult and it's really a juggling exercise. And the skills, the processing skills uh, that each person has can really change the result dramatically. And so we can go back to my original question. Can you take pictures of galaxies from the city? And th the answer is yes, yes you can. But 
it is difficult. It is truly, truly difficult and there is no miracle solution. So I've, I've used the IDAS GNB filter, the Galaxy and Nebula booster to re get all of those details and it works quite well. But there are limitations that you lose the colors. So then you can take images with the colors separately and then merge the two together. But it does mean like juggling different filters across multiple nights, more processing, it's more work, etc., etc. So imaging galaxies from the city, I don't recommend it. It's a lot of effort, it's a lot of time. It's much easier to just take your car, take the train and go to a darker area. But keep in mind that I am in Tokyo, so it's really kind of the worst case scenario that you can imagine. Uh, but really, that's all that I wanted to show in this uh, in this video, how we can take pictures of galaxies, including like less bright galaxies from the city and the limitations that we get, as well as the work that comes with that. I promise you in a darker area, something like what we call a Bordel 3 or like a dark zone effectively, you'd be able to get this result with like 30 minutes of imaging time or maybe one hour of imaging time and maybe five minutes of processing time and only one filter, or even no filter. It's, it's a completely uh, different ballpark, but it does show what is possible from the city. It also shows what we are losing by having so much light pollution in cities. There are ways to combat light pollution in your cities, by the way. There's uh, the street lights to be more directional, so they point only downwards. There's uh, having LED lights that have a different temperature that would be a bit uh, less aggressive. There's so many ways that light pollution messes not only with astronomy but with animals and with humans as well, our circadian rhythms, etc. And I hope that someday, someday we'll have more awareness of that so that even big cities will have less light pollution than we do now. But I can just dream. With that, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was an interesting video into how can we take images and what results can we expect when taking uh, pictures of galaxies from large cities with huge amount of light pollution like here in Tokyo. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, leave a comment with your own experiences of or whether you want to take more pictures of galaxies. Uh, leave a like, leave, uh, I mean, subscribe, click the bell icon, etc, etc, etc. But more important than all of that, don't forget one of you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.